Jaron Ennis was awarded the IBF title following Terence Crawford's forfeiture of the belt. When Ennis called out Crawford, it piqued Crawford's interest in a potential showdown. Initially hesitant, Kenny Porter eventually recognized Ennis as a formidable opponent for Crawford. Porter acknowledged Ennis's talent, stating, I believe Jaron Ennis would undeniably pose a significant challenge for him. Despite acknowledging Ennis's exceptional abilities, Porter emphasized the higher risks involved for Crawford in taking on Ennis, outweighing the potential rewards. Ennis, with a strong boxing lineage rooted in his family, showcases remarkable skills supported by his familial background in professional fighting, including his father and brothers. Each member contributes to Ennis's collective skill set, defining him as a highly skilled individual in the sport. Richardson Hitchens praised both fighters, but singled out Terence Crawford as the more seasoned and strategic fighter between the two. Hitchens acknowledged his past encounters with both Jaron Ennis and Crawford during their time in the amateur circuit and at the Olympic Training Center. While recognizing Ennis's extensive skill set and exceptional abilities, Hitchens emphasized Crawford's astute approach to the sport, stating, I believe Terence is a more tactically adept fighter who consistently makes superior decisions inside the ring. Hitchens portrayed Ennis as a relentless competitor, particularly dominant when facing opponents of a lower caliber, showcasing his prowess in tournaments. Reflecting on specific instances where Ennis had to exhibit strategic thinking, Hitchens referred to fights against himself and Gary Russell Jr. He clarified that these instances were the only occasions where he observed Ennis needing to rely on his tactical skills. Meanwhile, Regis Progre voiced his conviction that Jaron Ennis stands as one of the most deliberately avoided fighters in the sport. Progre echoed sentiments commonly shared among fans, asserting that Terence Crawford has intentionally avoided a matchup against Ennis for a significant duration. Progre conceded, stating, My apologies, Boots is undoubtedly a threat. People tend to steer clear of him due to his incredible talent, despite lacking recognition from encounters with renowned opponents. The hesitance to engage with Ennis is attributed to both preserving one's status and avoiding potential risk. While some individuals might contemplate facing Ennis, the prevailing reality is his exceptional skill set, which presents a formidable challenge. Terence Crawford views a potential bout with Ennis as a lose-lose situation, where the risks outweigh any potential rewards. He further explained that while many hold Ennis in high regard for his potential, personally, engaging in a fight against him would result in a lose-lose scenario. Crawford elaborated, stating, If I emerge victorious, critics might dismiss the win by claiming he was too young or unprepared despite his evident talent. Conversely, if he wins, it wouldn't be recognized as a significant victory for me. Essentially, Crawford emphasized that a bout with Ennis wouldn't offer the anticipated magnitude or impact expected from a major boxing event. He asserted that there isn't much at stake in fighting Ennis, especially considering his current position in his career. Crawford highlighted his nearing retirement and his focus on making meaningful choices. He expressed, At this stage of my career, I've tirelessly worked to reach this point. I believe I've earned the freedom to pursue fights that I deem worthwhile, regardless of others' opinions or sentiments. Before Terence Crawford was stripped of the title, Danny Garcia saw potential in Jaron Ennis to dethrone Crawford in a fight. Danny expressed his belief in Ennis's capability to overcome Crawford, citing Ennis's possession of all necessary skills and a strong work ethic. According to Garcia, it's a matter of timing for Ennis at this stage. He likened Ennis to a young, hungry lion waiting for the opportune moment, believing that Ennis's time is drawing near, and upon arrival, he will dominate the boxing scene for a substantial period. Ennis has consistently voiced his readiness to face Terence for quite some time, but there seems to be an obstruction preventing their bout. There's a reluctance from both parties to engage in the fight despite acknowledging it as the desired matchup by many. They perceive it as a high-risk, low-reward scenario. While acknowledging Ennis's capabilities, they feel that his full potential hasn't been witnessed yet. In his last fight, there was a glimpse, but facing a formidable opponent brought Ennis to another level. The belief is that when confronted with someone like Terence, it could draw out the best in Ennis. Danny emphasized not underestimating Terence's prowess in the ring. He's an outstanding fighter.
It appears that fellow professionals see Terence losing his title as a chance for Jaren to finally secure the fights he's been pursuing. Many view it as a blessing for him, considering his dedicated efforts. Jaren has strived for these opportunities, yet he hasn't been granted the fights he truly desired. However, at 147, someone will eventually have to confront him. Ideally, this shift could lead to substantial opportunities and financial gains, potentially securing lucrative fights in the welterweight division. Do you think that some fighters who previously avoided facing him or opted for different paths will now feel compelled to fight him? No, not unless there's a significant alteration such as moving up in weight class. Specifically addressing the welterweight division, there must be substantial financial incentives for someone to step into the ring with boots. It needs to be a significant payout, you know what I mean? Greg Hackett seems to echo the sentiments of many others. He desires to witness Jaron taking on well-known opponents. He expressed, you know, as they say in basketball, the ball doesn't lie. They'll put the belt where it rightfully belongs. Hackett emphasized this because someone inevitably needs to face Jaron. While everyone talks about aspiring to be a champion, this is the opportunity. Jaron has dedicated himself, done what was necessary, and now it's time to see who will step up. This situation adds an intriguing dynamic because now he has something to offer those who previously claimed he had little to provide. Do you believe he'll secure the fights now that he holds an IBF title? Or will it resemble the scenario that occurred with Terence Crawford a few years back? Will a few individuals pretend not to care about it? But in reality, fighters always aim to challenge the one holding the crown. Since Jaron now holds one of the titles, opponents will inevitably have to face him. They can't avoid it or attempt to sidestep the challenge by claiming there isn't enough money or any other excuse, as they used to when he didn't have any belts. Now they'll be compelled to step up and face him. Rob also sees this development positively and views it as a boost for the weight division. He expressed, Congratulations to Team Menace and everyone involved. It's about time, you know. It was inevitable that Crawford wasn't going to fight Boots. He already stated it was a lose-lose situation in his mind. So at the end of the day, acknowledge it and let Boots take over. Welcome to the new face of boxing at 147. Now he should find himself in the position he's long desired, finally getting the genuine fights he's been seeking. Let's observe how things unfold for him now that he's attained this status. Meanwhile, some fans are suggesting that he's merely the email champ, insinuating that Terence Crawford shouldn't have been stripped, and Jaron Ennis didn't earn the title but rather received it as a gift. Addressing this sentiment, Keith Thurman mentioned Ennis as a potential opponent. He remarked, While everyone talks about Ennis, we scarcely discuss Clarissa Shields, who has garnered more attention than Ennis. Do I acknowledge him as the man if that's the contract presented to me and I can't secure a title shot? I'll consider it. Look at his record. He's undefeated and climbing, seeking an opportunity. I sought a shot too, but they never gave it to me. I had to face this opponent and that one, following a similar path as Terence. He conveyed his preparedness for bigger and more substantial fights, but highlighted the possibility of Jaron being involved now that he holds the title. He noted that it could be a potential matchup considering they are in the same weight class. However, at the moment, his focus is on pursuing greater opportunities, such as facing Gerald Charo. The potential clash between Terence Crawford and Jaron Ennis has ignited considerable interest within the boxing community. The divergent viewpoints from experts, trainers, and fellow fighters underscore the intricacies surrounding this potential bout. While Ennis is celebrated as a highly skilled and avoided contender, Crawford, renowned for his strategic prowess, views the matchup as a lose-lose scenario. The recent acquisition of the IBF title by Ennis introduces a fresh dynamic into the welterweight division, creating opportunities for him to square off against renowned names. Some fighters express reluctance to engage with Ennis, citing various reasons. The high-risk, low-reward nature of the potential matchup raises uncertainties regarding whether he will ultimately secure the desired fights with his newfound title. Both fans and professionals anticipate a transformation in the welterweight landscape, acknowledging Ennis as a legitimate champion. Reactions to Terence Crawford losing his title vary, with some celebrating Ennis's rise, while others question the circumstances surrounding the title change. 
The dynamics of the welterweight division are predicted to undergo a shift now that Ennis holds the significant bargaining chip of the IBF title. The boxing world eagerly awaits developments in the welterweight division. One thing remains certain, Jaron Ennis has established himself as a formidable force, promising exhilarating matchups and potential breakthroughs for this rising star. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.